All right. First of all, I would like to just welcome everyone here again to our 30 minutes of excellence um, here for the month of March. So we are glad that you all were able to take some time away uh, from your day-to-day -day duties and tasks and join us with our um, awesome presenter that we have here today. Um, I would like to introduce our presenter, Mr. David Faro, and David is with the National Restaurant Association. David has um, uh, some great information to share with us today. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to David here in a moment. David's gonna give us our uh, next 30 minutes of excellence here. Um, David will take questions at the end. So he's going to go through his presentation and he'll take questions at the end. Um, in the event we're not able to get your question, he will also leave his contact information. So he's so gracious and you'll be able to contact him directly through email. Um, and in addition, this this uh, 30 Minutes of Excellence will be archived on our Not Up YouTube channel. So you can definitely go back and get it on our Not Up YouTube channel in a couple of days and share it with uh, your contacts and with your team as well. Um, so at this time, I would like to turn it over to David Faro of the National Restaurant Association. David, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. If a couple of you could just put your thumbs up that you can hear me, then I will be confident. There we go. Thank you so much. Kim, I'm so excited to be here today, and I'm a little starstruck because I, I, uh, I see a whole bunch of people who look like mentors to me. So let's look at this presentation today as a way that, you know, I come from industry, I come from 30 years in hospitality, and we're trying to build bridges with the workforce development system at all times. So all of you are really mentors, and thank you for being here today, and I would really look forward to uh, connecting with you at another time if that's uh, germane to the work that you're doing in your area. Of course, when people give presentations, they've always got an elevated heartbeat. So if anybody goes like this, it means slow down, David, and I'll pick up that message too. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about the power of a story. And I'm going to talk specifically about, if it works here, what's the hospitality industry story, right? And that's, if you were to ask me what I do nationally, it's to tell stories about hospitality and the hospitality in industry, and also listen to stories about the hospitality industry. But what's important is, what's the hospitality story for workers, right? We know that we are one of the largest industries in most states across the country. What's it like to work in hospitality? And again, what is that story? And is it congruent with the story that employers would share with you? Is it congruent with the story that workforce development professionals would share? What's the hospitality story in rural communities? Is it the same as the hospitality story in cities? Absolutely not, but there's definitely Venn diagram overlap. So then what's the hospitality story in counties and in states? And if we're talking on this level, then we need to talk about what's the hospitality story in the public sector, right? And a lot of times when you're talking about an industry our size, there can be a story from a specific part of the pie graph that when it's scaled out becomes a, a dominant narrative. And so the question I'm always asking workforce development professionals is, what's the dominant narrative in your board, in your council, in your region around hospitality? And is it correct, right? Another question. What's the hospitality uh, story in the private sector right now? The most dominant narrative that we know as an economy and as a country and frankly as a globe right now is that the story in the private sector is that the pandemic hit our industry very, very hard. And so my everybody would know, right, because they were watching the news, that we are in a period of recovery uh, in the private sector in the hospitality industry, right? Do we have a connection with nonprofit organizations? The answer is yes, but again, the question is, what is that story? Is it a different story than the articulation that we have with the public sector? So all of these things add up to be a region's hospitality story. And again, my work in the country is essentially to come into regions, to find out who's telling a hospitality story, to listen to what that story is, and then try and build a common story in that region that we can build on. Because the hospitality story in your region, and I want everybody to think for a second about the last restaurant, sit down restaurant you went to, quick service restaurant you went to, what's the last hotel you went to? What was your last experience with the front desk person at the hotel? What was your last experience with a host? What was your last experience with, with an operation that would be considered tourism? And then ask yourself that question, what story were they telling about the region where you live, right? 
There's a lot of different stories that are being told, but we know that that story that's being told in your region by hospitality professionals, right, definitely affects the economic footprint uh, and the economic health of your region as well. And so at this point, I, you know, I, why listen to me talk about this? Um, I have 35 years in the hospitality industry worldwide. I've uh, held a dishwasher position and I've held executive positions. I've worked around uh, the globe, uh, primarily in the US and Canada, but I've been involved in uh, international expedition leadership. The only reason I put a master of public administration is because I believe when you're building collaborative networks, you need someone who's good at making lists. So a master of public administration is a grad degree in making lists. I was the director of the Washington State Hospitality Education Foundation, which was a great learning experience to understand, understand workforce development and CTE frameworks, right? And all of this adds up to why listen to me? Because for the last decade, I've been a national workforce development collaborator. What does that mean, right? What does it mean to be a national workforce development collaborator? I used to tell people that it means that I build collaborative networks, right? but I don't build collaborative networks anymore. I connect strong collaborative networks, right? And there's a difference. For those of you who work in multi-sector collaborative networks, people just showing up at the table in 2020, what is it, three, isn't good enough anymore, right? We need strong players, right? So when I say we need strong players, people are like, what do you mean? And I mean, we need champions, whatever that means to you, right? I know what champions mean to me. It means the people that are gonna show up with heart, right? We know the hospitality industry needs help. We know that that help will come in the form of multi-sector networks that form, right? So we need the employees to be on board. We need workforce development agencies to focus on hospitality. Boy, does it make a difference when your workforce development council has declared us a sector of focus, right? That's huge, but that's, Changing the story. Why would a workforce development council make hospitality a sector of focus? There's all kinds of good reasons to do that if you have the right story in place. We need CTE frameworks. We need hospitality-minded legislators. We need community-based organizations because those wraparound supports that attend part uh, participants, right? Those are critical in terms of retention, all of the things that workforce now I'm preaching to the choir, right? But we need hospitality champions. If I have workforce development champions at the table, I've got to get through, and I'm just being frank, manufacturing conversations, IT conversations, STEM conversations, all which are germane to hospitality conversations, right? But do you know that those are part of the hospitality story? If you don't, please contact me after this webinar and I'd love to do some storytelling. So it means that these champions can work together at the very least to provide access to information. In Washington State right now, we're putting together a group of employers and workforce development professionals. We're sharing shared work. We're sharing incumbent work. We're sharing what on-the-job training means. We're sharing how to get into apprenticeships. Just simply access the information is a strong collaborative network, right? but it's also access to illuminated career pathways, right? If I'm taking people and putting them through the workforce development system who have no idea about the opportunities available in, in our industry, uh, and if you as workforce development professionals don't have an understanding of an illuminated career pathway that leads to a $95,000 job in three years available right now to a guy or a gal who's going in as a dishwasher, right? That's a story that once that's illuminated, boy, we can provide access to that. And we're going to accompany that with meaningful industry recognized credentials, right? Because if we just chuck you in there and say, you know, that pathway is available to you, buddy, have a good time, right? No, we're going to upskill, reskill, whatever it takes to make sure that when we provide access, right, to industry, to mentors, when we provide that access, the people are going to enter with skills that mean they can start succeeding right off the bat and continue to move up the line, whatever that means, uh, according to their hopes and dreams. It means access to apprenticeships. It means access to continuing professional development. Can we do this all on our own? No, we need the people who are on this Hollywood Squares that I'm looking at. We need you all to be champions, if it's germane to the work you're doing, right? And to help us do this. Here's where workforce development comes in. 
I'll describe some models in a few moments, right? But one of the conversations I'm really starting to have in strong collaborative networks is how do we provide case management, right? To accompany people for the first three, six, whatever is available, right? To make sure they have shoes for crews, to make sure that they have transportation, to make sure they at least know where some childcare resources may be, because those are the things that stop people from keeping coming to the job, right? And we know that without that partnership, right? We don't have a strong collaborative network. So access to those support services. And then you know where the associations come in is access to good jobs. Notice I highlighted good in blue, right? That's what 2023 means, right? It means that we can look to employers and to employees and to community-based organizations and to workforce development organizations and define a good job and illuminate career pathways to those good jobs. Not to a job that puts you in a dish room for the rest of your life because you didn't have English in the beginning, right? Because you didn't have those support services, right? No, a strong collaborative networks puts you on a pathway to a good job, hundreds of thousands of which are available in the hospitality industry right now. So it means organizations that can provide meaningful partnerships. If you're going to write anything down, that's what I'm looking for, right? Hmm, what does that mean? It's diff If you've met one workforce development council, you've met one workforce development council, right? If you've met one state restaurant association, you've met one state restaurant association. So each collaborative network, in order to be strong, takes a lot of upfront vision and dialogue. Come up with something cool that you think would provide meaningful impact. A strong collaborative network can reverse engineer that, right? And then get someone with an MPA degree and have them start making lists, right? What's my role in all of this? Because again, I'm using you as mentors. A lot of what I'm saying, everything, I see some people nodding their heads when I say stuff. It's because I learned this from workforce development professionals, right? So your mentorship is key. You have given me a, a blueprint, a roadmap to successful integration that we are utilizing in many states. My role as the senior manager of workforce development for the National Restaurant Association is to build bridges with workforce development agencies, with state restaurant associations and community-based organizations, right? Is it all making sense to everybody, right? So that we can have a strong network. You know, if you look at the economic data in your area, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna shake my finger for a second. If you're looking at economic data in your region, make sure it's accurate in response to the hospitality industry. There are a lot of nuances in hospitality data. I'm not telling you're right, I'm not telling you're wrong, but I've stood up at a lot of conferences and said you're wrong, right? So just make sure that data is tight, right? And when we have tight data where we understand where that plays a role in a strong collaborative network, we can build these kind of bridges. So this is all well and good. I'm preaching to the choir. Have we been able to pull this off in other states? There's 509 workforce development councils. You told us we need career pathway illumination. The National Restaurant has that available. This would be a follow-up conversation. If we're talking work readiness, we are ready to be a strong partner. If we're talking dislocated worker who's interested in our industry and has executive experience, we're a strong partner. And everywhere between those two positions on the pathway, we can be a strong partner for workforce development. We know that, right? But here's where it becomes a good job, boom. We need to provide a pathway that has strong potential for wage increase and promotion. Otherwise, it's not a pathway, right? It's a resting place. So when we look to workforce development agencies, I'm looking what kind of impact you want to have. Is it job readiness? Is it CTE? Is it workforce entry and re-entry? Is it apprenticeships, right? Let's, let's get our program impact in alignment with what the National Restaurant Association can bring to the table in terms of powerful resources as a partner. But a lot of times those discovery, uh, it takes us a long time to get to here, right? Um, so that's a big part of a beginning conversation. Once we understand that, we understand that there are three core levels in our industry, and we call them professional supervisor and manager, right? What we did was we went out on the advice of workforce development professionals, right? And laid out a well-defined path that is accompanied by certification at each level, right? Meaningful industry-recognized certification that in many cases in, is turnkey, 
right? It can all be done online if that's the way to do it. But in the same way, like I'm about to show you, you've met one state, you've met one state, the restaurant association is prepared to come in, understand a region, listen to a region and create a bespoke program if that's what's required. We do that through professional workshops, through all of the things you see here that are, are again, to overuse the word, germane to good upskilling and reskilling programs, right? We also have um, programs that go a little bit beyond training and educating that provide some of those wraparound services uh, that we find employees and workers need in order to retain right, and sustain their journey on that career pathway. So I'm gonna kind of flash through a lot of this, but I wanna tell you about how it's worked in real life. In June of 2022, I called the helpline at the Alaska Department of Labor and I said, hi, my name is David Farrow. What are you doing for hospitality workforce development? And this has been my model in most states. The person I talked to said, uh, I think you need to talk to Jane. And then Jane said, I think you need to talk to Jim. And then Jim said, I think you need to Kathy, talk to Kathy. And then Kathy and I created, and I want you to write that down, www.avtech.edu. Right? This recording will be available as well, but that's where you can read about it. And what we did was a strong agency partnership that allowed us to serve hospitality education in Alaska that included workforce development, the Department of Labor, the Seward Vocational School, um, uh, educational frameworks. And we all just said, what can we do to give people a leg up? And what we did was we took a population of kids who were, and I kids isn't the right term, youth, who were matriculating out of foster care. I took Chip Romp, one of the country's leading uh, hospitality trainers. We went up to Alaska. We spent a week with this group of people, right? For three days, we did the Certified Restaurant Professional Training Workshop, which covered a number of competencies. This is what happened. We set up a job fair on the last day across the entire state of Alaska. Contemplate that for a moment, the geographical challenge that was. So we put that together virtually. I'm gonna give some advice. I really needed workforce development to help me with the virtual job fair. We've come a long way since then. But what we did was 94% of the people in that room got a job. The only person who didn't get a job was because they got ill that morning. And he would have definitely had a job, right? The participants were like, this was life changing. Uh, and already one of the people who you saw in the picture, I don't have the email up here, uh, has already written me and said, I'm now the supervisor of the front desk right? That's in less than a year. This is the opportunity that's available. So are we only doing it in Alaska? No. We're very present in Appalachia doing super innovative things. And what, what's happening in Appalachia is we have said to the Appalachian community, hospitality plays a role in food service from farmers to the table, right? Let us be, we know supply chain. Some of you may have heard about the fact that there's been supply chain issues in the country, right? We are meaningful partners, right? In any discussion about supply chain. Michigan, man, look up Michigan and what the Michigan State Restaurant Association has done in conjunction with workforce development. They started their own school, right? So impact, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking today. If there are people on the phone, who, on the phone, can you tell what generation I'm from? Uh, if there are people on the phone who think that impact can be made, I tell people, I like to collaborate with workforce development so that people can pay their rent. If we can do that together in your region, I'd love to have some thought partnership about that, right? We have uh, great programs for justice impacted individuals doing the same things that I've talked about through this entire presentation. We are highly connected at the national level to funding stacks that allow us to do our work. Maybe write that down, funding stacks, right? That's always something that when people first get together, they have to figure out. We're powerful partners in that arena, right? Job readiness. And let's, let's stop for a moment and talk about job readiness. Send me a, a raised hand if you've worked in hospitality. Roughly 60% of the people on the phone should be raising their hands, right? We know that hospitality, entry-level work, 
creates customer service skills. Let me just say this, it creates transferable skills that retail is interested, banking is interested, anybody who has forward facing. And those of us on the phone who raised our hands in hospitality, even though we didn't stay, I did stay in hospitality, but even if you didn't stay in hospitality, you learned some valuable lessons uh, in, I, I guarantee that happened. Some people say, yeah, I learned that I didn't want to be in hospitality. That's maybe a valuable lesson as well, right? But we, we do know that, that we are the training ground for America's youth, right? And so that any investment, especially in rural areas, in the North Shore of the Olympic Peninsula of Washington State this spring, right? We are investing significant resources in just customer service, right? We're bringing a detailed customer service workshop because we know that area, even though very rural, has a heavy tourism economy in the summer, and we want to help them tell their story, right? Because we know that lifts all boats, right? So if job readiness is where your focus is, we can be a powerful partner. Again, where is it on this ladder, on this pathway that you'd like to think about? I'd like to think about it with you, right? We know that there are competencies that are critical for success in the hospitality industry. Look at those and ask me and ask yourself, whether those are just specific to hospitality, of course not. So that goes back to the conversation I was just uh, alluding to, right? We can be a training ground for a lot of transferable skills. And our customer service workshops, like the one we did in Alaska, which was deeper than that, but that was a component of it, or the one we're doing in Washington, we have a lot of industries asking to participate, right? So the people who do a good job at your table and who make you remember that anniversary or who make you remember that special stay, they're also great people to impart knowledge about top level customer service, right? Restaurant ready is sort of that end that we were talking about, right? How do we establish this as a great place for first jobs? And how do we prepare youth uh, to succeed in those first jobs? Again, it's about impact. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this through system audio. So maybe someone can give me a thumbs up if you do, but I'll describe what you're seeing here. This is the National Restaurant Association show that happens in May. And about 125,000 restaurant professionals come from all over the country to experience restaurant stuff. How's that for a good uh, description? These are uh, youth who have participated in our HOPES program. Our HOPES program is justice impacted youth who uh, became involved in reentry. I would love for you to look up and explore that program online. If you would like to be connected with that program, uh, please reach out to me. This is Pat Patricia Gill and she runs Restaurant Ready as well as the HOPES program. If you remember one slide from this entire presentation, remember this one, right? Um, let's see, tell me if you can hear what she says here. Just give me a thumbs up. No sound. Some of the important skills that we learn in Restaurant Ready are communication and all the kind of connecting with each other and working together to make it happen and switch it up when they can. Personal responsibility, helping out your team, handling your role. Coach Way wants me to mention how important consistency is. You are right, incredibly important. And they learn customer service, how to interact with people. Is that a really important part of this business? It is. Yes, that's so it agrees with me. All right. So uh, the main reason I took this video is because I kept, they were making salmon uh, croquettes. And so it was just an excuse to keep coming back and getting them. I think if you explore Restaurant Ready and Hopes, you will see many stories of impact, deep impact. And there is a team surrounding Restaurant Ready and Hopes that is ready to be strong partners in any collaborative effort um, that is using We Owe Youth Grants, that's using um, justice impacted funding, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, these three who are uh, making the food here are fast friends of mine, and uh, they are on a career pathway to meaningful work in the hospitality industry, and they're super excited about it. All right, let's see if I'm back. All right, apprenticeship. I know a lot of times when I'm talking with workforce development professionals, apprenticeship is something that comes up and I'd love to talk with people more about apprenticeship. But right now, um, I'm an SME for a line cook, uh, kitchen man, uh, sorry, assistant kitchen manager 
apprenticeship. I'm also an SME for, and that's a subject matter expert of people who don't know the acronym with the Department of Labor for an assistant restaurant manager apprenticeship. We already have line cook. We already have kitchen manager and the certified restaurant professional program that I showed you with the supervisor and the manager are uh, the related training and instruction for those apprenticeships. So to sort of put a bow on that, if apprenticeship is something that you're thinking about in the hospitality industry in your region, I come with a lot of resources and I'd be a good person to just have a conversation with about if you wanted to explore that space a little bit farther, right? We know that that's a concern. Let's look at data together and let's figure out whether some of these high demand apprenticeship occupations uh, exist in your area, right? We do have a restaurant and hospitality leadership center, right? That is a fantastic place. If hospitality workforce development is something that is on your calendar, uh, we can talk more about that as well. And, and I, I mean, I can preach and preach and preach. I actually am the son of a preacher man, so I'm pretty good at it about why integration with our leadership center is a good idea, right? And so again, I'm just going to finish up with we are seeking meaningful impact with workforce development. And that starts, right, with an introduction and sort of a high level discussion like this. But the next step is for us to get together and just talk to be th thought partners. When the National Restaurant Association reached out to me and said, would you like to be a thought cowboy in the area of workforce development and hospitality workforce development? I said, I don't know what that means. But yes, I would like to do that. So be thought cowboys and cowgirls with me and let's figure out ways to create strong collaborative networks around hospitality workforce development. There's how you can get in touch with me. And Kim, thank you so much. And this was so much fun. And it was just really fun to look at everybody smile while I gave the presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you, David, for that great, great information. So I have several pages of notes here that I've been jotting down as you're going through. Um, and David, you did talk about uh, the state. So are there state um, national restaurant partnerships that they should reach out to or should they go to you directly and you refer them out? That's a great question. I think coming through me would be a great idea because the National Restaurant Association hired me to sort of navigate because, as I said at the beginning of the conversation, two people raised their hand when they said they have a great relationship with a work for, uh, with a state restaurant association. So the information flow goes both ways. A huge part of my job, as I mentioned, is just letting our employers know the resources that this group of people brings to the table. Shared work is a great example. That was a lifesaver for many people, right? The shared work program. Um, and so, uh, yeah, reach out to me. Because if you're in a state that doesn't have a, a really strong presence at the SRA yet, we can build that together. If it's a state like Michigan, I'm just going to make an introductory phone call and away you can go, right? How's that for an answer, Kim? It's great. Thanks. Sounds good. Does anybody else? We have a couple of uh, more minutes uh, with David here. So if you have any questions, feel free to take yourself off of mute or you can type into the chat box and um, ask your question. And Naomi, I see your question about the presentation. So again, this recording will be on our Not Up YouTube channel. So you can just go to YouTube, type in Not Up. It'll be there um, no later than Monday. Um, but also, uh, I'm sure if you email David, he will be happy to send you the PowerPoint. Am I correct on that, David? I am. I don't want to volunteer. You. Okay, perfect. So if you want the PowerPoint, just email David and you can view the recording on Not Up Dot, uh, on our Not Up YouTube channel. Will do. Thank you. So, David, this is Naomi. I do have some questions. Do you know if Kentucky is active with the Restaurant Association? I know. Some people have talked about it, but not very many that I'm part of. So that's a, just a, I, it's so serendipitous. So <laughs> I just met with the CEO of the Kentucky Restaurant Association who heard the buzz and said, we want in on this, right? Let's build some meaningful collaborative networks in Kentucky. Where we're at in Kentucky right now is that, especially now that I hear you say that, is we'd like to bring people together and start talking about what might be meaningful on the ground in Kentucky. Um, and then my role in that is to start look at funding sources and funding stacks and what could we do and, and how would it fit together. So uh, 
I have your name down. I will be reaching out to you for sure and connecting you with the State Restaurant Please Association. Please do. I'd be happy to work with that with you guys. Thank you. This is very informative. Wonderful. I did have a question on your apprenticeship model. Uh huh. And and I see that you know I have hospitality, I have restaurant work, and then I have HR work, and now I'm in workforce, so I've covered the gamut. Um, but you're trying to sell apprenticeship program to restaurant professional. How are you approaching that to somebody who has a small mom and pop or is a small chain owner? Right, so uh, so I have a colleague right now who is opening up a small mom and pop restaurant in a rural town, right? And that had the same question. All of their employees are going to be apprentice, apprentices. That's the program that they're putting them on. They made the decision that they were going to be a people development company that also serves breakfast. Uh, <laughs> and that's that's really what they're doing. And so how do I talk to a mom and pop about that? Well, let's talk about who they attracted when they put out in their uh, job announcements that part of the, the job announcement is a they're going to be paid. They're going to get an apprenticeship. Their RTI is going to be paid for as well. And at the end of that position, they're going to have an industry recognized credential. And in the interview, they are told if you use that industry recognized credential to go to a bigger, better place, great. We know what our role is in this community. And we're going to just up the level of, of the ability for people to tell stories. They have had their doors beat down by awesome. people looking for work. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And, right. and, they, and David, it looks like we have just one more question and, I'm here and all then day. you can continue. I'm sorry. It's just saying, how can we connect um, in California? So California would be because it's a big old state, right? I would be a great person to talk to first so that I can really understand what your motivations are, et cetera, et cetera. And then I will connect you with the right people in the industry uh, to move forward. California is a, a great state and a powerful partner on the state restaurant association level. This was fun. Right. Thank you, everybody. Yes, it was. Thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you. David, thank you again for uh, giving us the invitation to reach out to you. So again, anybody, if you have any additional questions for David, his information is right here on the screen. And thank you so much for joining us on our March edition of 30 Minutes of Excellence. And we look forward to seeing you all very, very soon.